five pounds a month for 12 months with a 35 pound setup fee that's a 144 pound saving hurry offer ends 29th of march search virgin media bundles Hello, good evening, and welcome to Sheffield Live News. I'm Baila Jalo, and these are today's main stories. In the last hour, Health Secretary Matt Hancock has said a new hospital is to be established in the Excel Center, an exhibition center in East London. According to Mr. Hancock, the new NHS Nightingale Hospital will consist of two wards and hold up to 4,000 patients. In response to the UK's call for retired medics to run to the NHS, the Health Secretary said they are looking for 250,000 NHS volunteers to help National Health Service employees with shopping, delivery of medicines, and to support those who are shielded. He confirmed more than 11,500 retired staff have come forward, including 2,660 doctors and 6,147 nurses. He added that more than 18,000 final year medical students will also join the NHS workforce. And now, the mayor of the Sheffield City region has described the new tough measures announced by the government to stop the spread of the coronavirus as a test for our country that we can't afford to fail. Mr. Javi said these are unprecedented times and we all have a responsibility to work together and to do everything we can to slow this virus down. The Barnsley Central MP added the situation is grave and each day more people are dying from this disease. I welcome the new measures introduced by the Prime Minister and I urge everyone to follow this advice and in particular to stay at home unless there is a compelling reason to leave. The Chief Constable of South Yorkshire Police has issued a statement following the Prime Minister's announcement last night telling people not to leave their homes except for a few very limited purposes. Stephen Watson says his force will inform, encourage and support but says if it finds people not willing to comply with the new rules, it will move to enforcement once it understands the detail of the legislation. In other news, South Yorkshire police are treating the death of a man whose body was found in the early hours of this morning in Sheffield City Center as unexplained. According to officers, the man's body was found on Union Street. Detectives say the man in his 20s has now been formally identified and efforts are being made to trace his family. The first results of a new research into the psychological and social impacts of the coronavirus epidemic are expected this week. Research from the University of Sheffield and Ulster University are trying to understand the mental health impact of the current crisis. It comes in predictions of a rise in depression, anxiety and paranoia. The team is surveying 2,000 people in the UK and then again in a month's time. Researchers led by Professor Richard Bentel in Sheffield said there has been very little study of the psychological impacts of viral epidemics. Let's take a look at the weather for the next couple of days. Tonight will be dry with long clear spells. It will become cold with a few mist patches possible for worse dawn. After a cold start for Wednesday, it will be a dry day with long sunny spells. Welcome back to Sheffield Live News on Tuesday the 24th of March. First tonight, Citizen Advice Sheffield have announced it has moved face-to-face -face advice to telephone and online advice only due to the outbreak of the coronavirus. Following government recommendations to avoid all known essential contact, the charity says it will provide an enhanced phone and digital offer to residents who are experiencing the impact of coronavirus in their communities. Earlier, I spoke to Claire Lauder, the chief executive of Citizen Advice Sheffield, on the phone and she gave me more details about the decision. Uh, well, we decided um, last week we could see that we weren't going to be able to keep our staff and clients safe if we 
continued with um, face-to-face service delivery. So um, last week we made the big decision to try and move all our staff and those volunteers that could carry on working for us, um, all of them going to home working. Um, And um, yesterday we launched our services again, but all from phone and digital and email. Um, and because we see this as the way that we can continue to offer a service to people uh, throughout this really difficult time. Yeah, speaking of difficult time, how difficult is this going to be for both your staff and clients as well? Because from my understanding, I can see here on the press release that you sent us, uh, probably you might be receiving up to 200 calls a day or even more. Well, we, we, are, we are very busy. And um, not surprisingly, because so many people across Sheffield will be really scared about what's happening to them, particularly those who are worried about um, their money, they may have um, lost their job, they may Mm -hmm. be worried about whether there's going to be any benefits. Although the government has made some very welcome announcements, um, it's it's still really important to recognise that until that translates into money into people's pockets, it doesn't really allay their fears. They have suddenly gone from having a decent income, uh, it's in, in many cases, uh, to nothing. And if I'm not mistaken, um, you offer services to each and everyone, from jobs to all sorts of things. Yeah, we offer, I mean, in, in this sort of crisis, we expect to be supporting people around um, how to claim benefits, um, how to approach their employer if they think that the employer might keep them on through this difficult time, Um, worries about whether they can uh, pay their outgoings, things like council tax and rent. Uh, So all of those things we will be talking to people about and advising them the best way that we can to help them find a way forward. As you mentioned, this is uh, very unprecedented. It is a very difficult time. No one was expecting this. But in terms of the elderly as well, as you will know, not many of them will be kind of like uh, know how to use the internet or that kind of thing. We everything being kind of digitalized now. How difficult is it going to be for for those sort of people who who are not kind of connected to the internet or who don't know how to use the internet? Well, there's lots of different support being developed across the city. Um, and the City Council and the voluntary sector are working really closely together. Uh, For for, for older people who are really looking for support with um, not being able to go out and how they're going to get their shopping and some of their care needs, there there is a fantastic array now of community hubs developing, something that the City should be very proud of. Um, In terms of our services, I am guessing, but look, it's only uh, a couple of days in, I am guessing that a lot of our calls will come from people who've had a sudden change of circumstances um, that have that has been created uh, by the impact uh, of this pandemic. In terms of your staff, do you think they will be able to cope uh, the volume of calls or the, the kind of demand that will be coming their way? Well. What what everyone has to recognise, and it's the same for all of us, that um, our staff are are professionals and will do their very best uh, to continue to deliver their service. But they're also facing the impact themselves. Uh, They're facing the impact on themselves and their families. Many of our staff have got children at home now. Uh, They may have other people in the household who are also trying to work from home. So it's not easy, um, but the thing is that our staff are very committed to carrying on trying to help people in these difficult situations, and so they will do their very best, um, and we'll do our best to support them. As much as you are there to be helping people or to support people, but will you be like in a situation now where you will have to prioritise the kind of calls or the kind of services that you offer to people? We we will try and help as many people as we can. Um, We're having conversations with different organisations about what other support we can get to help um, uh, deliver this service uh, to to communities. Um, I don't envisage us um, saying that we'll help one person and not another, um, but we will try and 
um, ensure that we help the people where we can really make a difference. Claire Loder there speaking to me earlier. Next, it's the first time this week since the government ordered all schools in the UK to shut their doors to pupils whose parents are not regarded as key workers to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Shafila spoke to Chris Wells, a media teacher, to find out what impact the closure will have on teachers, students and parents. I think um, the, the, the first thing is on the, the children that were due to take exams, so the year 11s and year 13s. Um, I, I, work, I work mainly with uh, year 12s and year 13s. And um, I think there was a kind of lazy presumption from some people the, you know, the students would be, yeah, no more school. Uh, they were gutted. They were, they were so upset. Um, you know, they've been working hard towards their qualifications. They're not going to sit their exams. Um, what's happening now is that we teachers, we're going to be predicting the grades for them, um, which I don't have a problem with because we know our students. But for a lot of them, um, it was kind of devastating news. You know, they've been through school together. They're finishing. And also school is a good distraction for them, you know, from everything that's happening. I think it was, for all of us, it's, you know, it gives them something to work towards, something to focus on, yeah. Speaking of that though, as a teacher, how difficult will it be for you knowing that some of your students, like you mentioned, you already know them, mm. but sometimes as well looking at exams, what some people do get on exams is kind of like different compared to like mock exams or coursework. Yeah, however, um, you know, I'm very critical, speaking in a personal capacity, I'm very critical of the current exam system of, you know, 100% examinations. I, don't, I think there's better ways to assess uh, students' uh, ability and progress, you know, than 100% than exams. So maybe after this we'll go back to how things were before, or maybe people might take a broader view of what can be an assessment. Uh, so, for, in, for example, in the subject I teach, media studies, it used to be 50% coursework, 50% examination. The coursework is rigorous, you know, it's not easy. And, uh, you know, yourself, you know, making a film, going out and editing it, planning it, uh, takes time and you can't just do it the last minute. So, you know, for, I, I kind of hope if anything positive comes out of it, it will be that maybe we can look at things a little bit more broadly in terms of how we do things. In terms of what we have seen here, uh, what has happened is totally unprecedented. Uh, nobody was expecting this to happen. Yeah. Will you say schools were kind of like prepared for this? I think we knew it was, hap we knew it was going to come, uh, but there was a lot of uncertainty and the lack of clarity. And I think that started to really cause quite a bit of tension. It caused a bit of nervousness. Um, you know, it's really important uh, that, um, that parents and communities have faith in the schools where their children go to and we, we weren't able, you know, we, it wasn't possible for us to communicate anything than what was being communicated to us on a daily basis. And equally what started to happen, um, it wasn't too bad at our school, but you know, across this country, schools, um, staff started feeling ill, um, children started to self-isolate, and so it started to become a little bit unsustainable. So it wasn't really a surprise. Um, it, we knew it was coming, we weren't quite sure when, um, and I don't really know what I feel about the arguments around whether schools should have been kept open in the first place. Obviously, other countries have done it differently. They've shut everything down straight away. Um, you know, I think, I don't know. I, you know I'd have to be a virologist, and, uh, and I'm not. <laughs> I don't know if you are a parent, but this is going to be a very difficult one for parents. And yourself, I believe you are one of those, if you are a parent, uh, one of those that will be excluded, where you'll be allowed to take your children to school. How difficult do you think this is going to be for parents? Um, well, I don't have any children, and <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm quite thankful for that at the moment. Uh, but uh, never mind my kids; I, I teach them. Uh, but um, no, I, it's going to be extremely difficult. It's going to be extremely difficult for for families um, with all the other pressures that are occurring around people's work, people's lack of it's, it's, there's, a, there's a clarity emerging but what was a lack of clarity around you know what's going to happen with people's wages uh people you know there's a lot of people and uh, you know a, a huge amount of people in this country who live quite a fragile existence and i think this has exposed that um obviously schools are going to be supporting parents as best they can with kind of learning activities uh, bbc bite size have released loads of new materials there's an educational charity in sheffield not a charity sorry business it's a business called twinkle and they're giving out free resources as well so i would urge parents to have a look at what resources are there for their children um but also as well you know i think it's <laughs> it can be an opportunity as well to kind of you know i think one thing that we often all complain about in our lives sometimes is lack of time 
like a time to do the things we want to do, to read the books we want to read, to be able to spend time with our loved ones. Um, and obviously, one of the difficult things about this outbreak is that a lot of people won't be able to spend time with, especially elderly relatives. And you know, you know, with my, with my parents, I won't be able to see them over the over the coming months. Um, but I think for families who are going to be, you know, spending a lot of time in, in the house together, um, you know, I think education can continue um, and in different forms. Um, but it's going to be very, very difficult. And especially for, I, I especially feel for families that, you know, I, I think people need to be really mindful of the fact that not everybody's family is a happy place. Not everybody's home is a safe place. And, you know, for those students, um, it, it could be a really difficult time. And I think that's something which we, we should all be concerned about. Well, that's it for tonight. Let's take a look at the weather for the next couple of days. Tonight will be dry with long clear spells. It will become cold with a few mist patches possible towards dawn. After a cold start for Wednesday, it will be a dry day with long sunny spells. This is a message from the government's chief medical officer about coronavirus. It's important we all protect older people and those with existing health conditions from coronavirus. If you or anyone in your household has a high temperature or a new and continuous cough, even if those symptoms are mild, you should all stay at home. Don't go to the GP or hospital. Instead, go to nhs.uk to check your symptoms and follow the specialist medical advice. Only call NHS 111 if you can't get online or your symptoms worsen. Protect yourself. Protect others. Protect the NHS. Thank you.